welcome to another Tribe Teams tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to add a video element to your page or post using Tribe Architect as well as how to customize this element. So first of all what you want to do is click on the plus sign from the right sidebar to open the list of Tribe Architect elements. Here either scroll down to look for the video element or start typing its name in the search bar. When you find the element grab it and drag and drop it on your editor where you best see fit. As you can see all of the element options will appear in the left sidebar and the ones we're gonna talk about today are the main options found here. Before we begin please note that if you have previously set up a video type of custom field using the advanced custom fields plugin and you have also assigned a value for that custom field for the page that you are working on now then the first option from this section will be this element type option. You can choose between static and dynamic. If you choose the static option, which is selected by default here, this means that the video is going to come from a static source and I'm going to show you all of these options in a second. However, if you want to use the custom field that you have previously set up, then you should choose the dynamic option here and then you will be able to choose the video that you have assigned as a value of the custom video field. In this case, if I click on this field right here and choose the video field group, then the video that I have assigned as a value for this page will show here. I'm gonna go back and select the static source so I can show you the rest of the options. So the next option, which can be the first option that you see in case you have not set up the custom field, is the source option. This means that we do have some available video platforms from where you can choose from when adding a video to your post or page. To see all of these sources, simply click on this field and a drop down will open and you can click on the desired source. We're gonna go through the options for each one. If the video that you want to use comes from YouTube, then go ahead and select this platform. Next, you can insert the URL of the video in this field here. Once you paste the URL, you can click anywhere outside the field and you can see that the video will be added. The next option here is the video start time and this means that you can choose a certain time for the video to start. If you want to do that, you can either insert numerical values in these fields or just use the up and down arrows like so. For example, if I want this video to start at the 30 seconds mark, I can write 30 in this field, like so. Next comes the video style option and this means that you can choose from a selection of video styles. If you want to see them, click on this field and then you can scroll down to see all of the styles and choose the one that best fits your site. Once you choose the style, click on apply. These are all the specific YouTube video options. Now, if you want to upload a video from Vimeo, then you can go back to this source field, click on it and then choose Vimeo. You will see that the options are similar to the ones from YouTube. This is where you will have to insert the video URL but in this case you can also choose a player color. If you want to do that, click on this color box here and this will open a color picker pop-up. The way to choose a color here is very easy, you can simply use the color picker to manually choose a color like so. If you have the code of the color, you can insert it in this field right here or you can even choose from one of your previously saved colors, like so. Once you choose a color, you can click on the apply button here. In the case of this video as well, you can also choose a video style. Again, to choose a video style, you can click on this field here and choose the one that you like by clicking on it and then clicking on apply. The next available video source is the Wistia one. You can go ahead and click on it if you want to upload a Wistia video. Then again, feel free to insert the URL here, choose a player color and even choose the video start time and video style. Next, if we click on this field again, you will see that you also have the option to insert an externally hosted video. This means that your video will come from another platform other than YouTube, Vimeo or Wistia and you can easily insert the URL in this field right here. Keep in mind that this URL has to be a valid one and it cannot contain any spelling mistakes in order for the video to work. Also, please take a look at the article to see what video file types the URL should point to. Once you insert the URL here, you can also choose a video style. Again, click on this field, choose the preferred video style and then click on apply. 
Going back to the source list, you can see that another option is to choose an uploaded video. Now, if you click on this option, this means that you can choose the video to insert into your post or page from your media library. All you have to do is to click on this choose video option and the media library will open with all of the video files that you have here. If you want to upload a new one, click on this section right here and then click on select files which will open a pop-up and you will be able to choose a new file from your personal computer. However, if the video is already in your media library, go back to this tab and then click on the video that you want to insert and click on insert into post. After you insert the video, you can also change the video style if you want to. The last available source here is the Spotlighter source. If you want to insert a video from this website, click on it and feel free to insert the video URL in this field here. Now you will have some options here for which you can use the switch buttons right next to them in order to activate or deactivate them. The first option is the performance optimization option which will be on by default and you should know that this does not influence the way your video looks like in any way. The difference it makes can only be seen in the back end. If however you want to deactivate this option you can simply click on this switch. However, we recommend you keep it activated since it will optimize your video. The next option is the adjustable player size option. This is also enabled by default, which means that the size of the video will be automatically adjusted to the element it is embedded to. However, if you want to change that, simply deactivate this option and then you can manually choose your player size. If you want to do that, click on this field right here and choose one of the available presets. You can also choose the custom option here, which will allow you to add the width and height that you want. If you want to change the resolution from here, you can either use these up and down arrows or you can write numerical values in these two fields. I'm gonna go back and enable this option just to have the next one available as well. This is because the next option, which is called the custom aspect ratio and orientation, will not be available if the adjustable player size is disabled. If you activate this as well, you will see some size presets from which you can choose. And to customize this, simply click on both of these fields and choose the preferred option. You can also choose an orientation if you want your video to be landscape or portrait. For this video source too, you can choose the custom start and end times. And if you want to do that, click on this field to activate this option. And then you can insert the video start time as well as the video end time. The last option here is the Anonymize Viewing Data option, which is disabled by default, but you can easily activate it by using this switch. Now, those were the specific options for each of the video sources. Besides the source and video style options, you also have the default aspect ratio option, as well as the sticky float on scroll and advanced options. These will apply to all of the video sources. The default aspect ratio option is enabled by default, which means that when you upload the video, the aspect ratio of it will be the default 16 by 9 1. If you want to change this, simply disable this option and choose the right aspect ratio for your video. Of course, you can also add a custom ratio and for that click on this option and decide what your aspect ratio you want. Lastly, we have the sticky float on scroll option. This means that you can set up the video so that whenever someone scrolls past it, a sticky float video icon will appear. This is disabled by default, but you can go ahead and click on it to activate it. Once you do that, you will see a new section with some more options for the floating video. And here is how to use all of these. The first one is the float position one. And this means that you can establish the position of the floating video. You can click on this field to open a list with all the available positions and choose the one you prefer. Please keep in mind that you will not be able to preview the floating video position in the editor only if you activate this last option here which is called the view floating video in preview option. Now if we scroll down past the video you will be able to preview the sticky float icon which you can see right now on the screen. The options that you can have here are top left or right, which will place this floating icon in the top left or right corner of your site, then bottom left and bottom right, which of course will place the floating video on the bottom side of the screen, either to the left or to the right side. And the last one would be the keep original position option, which 
will keep the floating video aligned to the original video. Next option here is the width of the floating player, which you can modify by manually changing this number here. As you can see, I've increased its width. Next, we have the top padding on float option, which means that you can set the distance from the floating video to the top side of your screen. If you want to change it, simply insert the numerical value in this field. The next option is the right padding on float, which again is similar to the option above and you can set the distance between the floating video and the left or the right side of the screen, depending on the floating video's position. Again, if you want a bigger distance between the left or right side of the screen and the floating video, simply increase this value here. Nextly, you can choose the devices on which the sticky float on scroll options should be activated. You can leave it activated on desktop, mobile or tablet view or any combination between these three devices. Simply choose the ones that you want by clicking on them. Lastly, you have the enable close button option and this means that you can choose whether this floating video should have a close button or not. By default, it will not have one, but if you want to change that, simply click on this switch button and as you can see, a close button has appeared on top of the floating video. As I've mentioned before, this option can be used if you want to have a preview of the floating video in the live editor. Moving on, the last set of options from the main options section of the video element are the advanced options. If you click on this section, you will be able to open all of these advanced options and you will actually see a list of them which you can apply to your video. You should know that these options depend on the source of the video that you have added and you will find each of these described in the article below this video. For example, in the case of the uploaded video that we have chosen as a source now, we have the autoplay option which if you enable, this means that the video will automatically start playing when someone accesses the page. Also you have the hide player controls option which you can switch on if you need the play controls such as volume, play or pause and so on to not be visible. Then you have the loop option, which means that once the video stops, it starts playing again. You also have the allow users to download option, which of course will allow the users of your site to download your video. Now besides these, you can also have options such as hide logo, optimize related or hide the full screen option or the title bar and so on again depending on the video source that you have chosen you can find all of these options described in a list in the article below this video as well as what are the advanced options for each of the video sources you can also choose a thumbnail for the video from here and for that you can click on this blue choose file button which will open the media library and you will be able to choose an image and then click on insert into post. This is going to be the video thumbnail. Another thing that you can set here is the play icon. You can change the icon if you want and for that click on this field to open the icon library and you can scroll down to see all of the icons, find the one that you prefer and then click on it and then click on select. As you can see the play button has changed. Then you can also choose a color and a size for this icon if you want. When you're done editing the floating video, then you will have to deactivate this option in order to use the rest of the general options. For all of these, we do have separate articles that you can check out in our knowledge base. This was how to add and customize a video when editing a page or post with Thrive Architect. Please make sure to check out all of the other tutorials and articles that we have created to get even more familiar with Thrive themes and all of our products and features.